Welcome back to Bad Movies Rule. Give raw power to the cause of order. Keep the modular flow. Bad Movies Rule means pleasure in the use of ultra tech weapons, pleasure in the stun. We're talking about solar babies. Let's go. Pleasure in the chase and stun. <laughs> California <laughs> knows how to party. <laughs> it kind of looked like that, didn't it? They, they based that uh, they based that song and that music video on Solar Babies. Did they really? I, I can't back that up. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly seems like they did. We're gonna roll the. We don't do research here anyway, no, so just you know, it. we just go with it, buddy. How are you guys doing today? Welcome in. Three man booth. Three man booth for Solar Babies. We got Mel Vandy in the house. What's good, Mel? Uh, what's good is I'm, at least I'm not in the middle. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I'm in a I'm in a sandwich I never thought I'd be in. There here. you go. Hey. What's up, Mueller? Hey, what's going on? I'm not much, man. I'm glad that what you're do? here. Yeah, Solar Babies. You ever uh, played skateball before? Uh, no. <laughs> I I no? played something similar. Oh, uh, on feet, not skates. It's like a mixture of lacrosse and yeah. and rollerblading, basically. Yeah, it was like <laughs> and high ally. And that's exactly yeah. what's that high ally. That's where those guys take the like racket balls yeah. or the like cue balls and they whip it at the wall at 200 miles an hour. I've never heard of it. Oh. It was in our Spanish textbooks. Was it? <laughs> I thought we had to learn all about the high ally Dude, players. I couldn't remember enough to get a quiz. Like score that was better than fifty percent. You think I'm remembering that thirty years later? Ernesto Juego. <laughs> I thought he was talking about some sort of Vegas table game. Yeah, I don't, don't I know. Who knows what Mel gets into in his spare time? I never know what he's doing there in the basement of the shoe store. Honestly, for those of you who are new, a movie roasting podcast. But occasionally we're surprised by these movies and we end up liking them. We'll go through the plot scene by scene. We'll give out some awards to the people at the end, and then ultimately we're going to try and figure out Mel. If it actually is bad, or maybe it's good. This one surprised me. D d well, it, that could go one of either ways. Yes, so it we'll could. Let's just, we'll just see. A surprising is a good way to put it. Let's <laughs> jump straight into the vitals of this movie. Oh, this has vitals. <laughs> it does. Is 1986. It, is it life support? Is that yes. Life support. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to have to defend this movie today. That's what we're going to be doing the entirety of this episode. Uh, no, okay, so the movie was directed by Alan Johnson. And if you haven't heard of Alan Johnson... He does good work. He is a well-known choreographer for Mel Brooks movies. Oh. Right? The Inquisition. <laughs> Let's begin. So why wouldn't you say, yeah, this is the right guy to direct Solar Babies? Absolutely. So it's not the guy that owns the restaurant up in Door <laughs> No, different. That's, <laughs> okay, a, that's different. a different... Alan Johnson. Alan Johnson. Right, it. Now, so John Borman was approached by Mel Brooks, who inexplicably was the person that produced this movie. Yeah, that, that was surprising that Mel Brooks had anything to do with this. Yeah. And and Borman was uh, the guy that made the movie Excalibur. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that movie. It was early 80s. Sword movie. Sword yeah, movie. I heard, of of yeah, I heard of it. The guy was too, <laughs> apparently he was too nitpicky with Mel about the script, so he fired that guy and just ha hired his longtime choreographer and was like, you can direct this movie. And that they lost their lot. pants. So Mel doesn't always make the right decision no. here. Mel no. makes great decisions. But a lot of times, even you could say 90% of the time. Speaking for all Mel's out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize. Oh, we're talking about Mel Brooks. That's right, yeah. Mel Brooks. Oh, I mean, I, I have made some poor life choices, but I'm, I'm, I'm fixing them. No, you're doing good, man. You've really come a long way since the arrest. Now, this movie was written by <laughs> Wallen Green. Who wrote Eraser? He wrote an Arnold movie. You ever see that one with James Conn? Yes. Yes. I've You've been erased. You've been erased. I can't do the voice, so. No, it's all right. It's good. And D.A. Metrov, those are the two writers. The movie starred Jason Patrick, who you might know from Speed 2, Cruise Control. All right. Wasn't he Lost Boys, too? <laughs> he was Lost Boys, yeah. yeah okay, just, good, good, know, good. Make sure I got the right guy. This is a bad guy. movie podcast, so I led with his worst movie wow. probably ever. You have to. Jamie Gertz. Whoa. She's like nice. royalty. There you go. Yeah, find it. There we go. Oh, that wasn't it. That wasn't it. <laughs> okay, sure, yeah, whatever. Sure. Yeah. Go with it. Fine. <laughs> we, really, the we really got to <laughs> label those. We're rolling. We got to label these. <laughs> Which is the Jamie Gertz button? No, Jamie Gertz. Well, no, she can have, have to, any of them. We're going to have to have a Jamie Gertz button. 
Now, uh, Jamie Gertz this is our first time she's been on the podcast uh, since we did boyfriend school. Long, long, long time ago. Welcome, Jamie Gertz, to the uh, right. kids' table. <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> she's too busy Maybe right now someday. running the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah, she's that what kind she's of a, doing these days. She, her, her and her husband are the owners of the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, all right. Yeah. So <laughs> she's, I guess, kind of in the NBA now. Uh, Richard Jordan also starred in this movie. Michael's cousin. This is where probably. Yeah. No. That's how she got in the NBA. That's, yeah, yeah, she knew. Makes sense. That she knew Richard. Yeah. yeah. Right. This is where Mel. Brooks, just to be oh, clear, okay. made a terrible decision. The budget for this movie was only supposed to be $5 million. Respectable. Okay. But because Alan didn't know what the hell he was doing, and apparently when Bell came out to visit him, he realized half of what he had shot made no sense. Shocker. The budget <laughs> ballooned to $25 million. They went $20 million <laughs> over budget. Okay. I mean, it's just a number. That's yeah. They'll make that back, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, the and you would you would assume with that ballooning of the budget. A little more sense was to be made uh, in the movie itself. <laughs> yes, yes. The box office, though, sadly, was one and a half million dollars on a $25 million budget. Even on a $5 million budget. Ooh. Ooh. So you're saying this movie didn't see the light of day? <laughs> no, I'm saying Mel... What That's was, a solar see, joke. This was the middle of the Solar 80s. babies. <laughs> so this ate up all of Mel's Spaceballs money, I feel I, like. I know, and that's sad. <laughs> uh, all of it. Dang it. The Schwartz was not with us. No, not. definitely not. So the movie is currently sitting at a 4.7 on IMDb. A zero percent <laughs> on Rotten Tomatoes. What? This is this, this is our first. Maybe Whoa. our first well, yeah. zero. Did uh, has it even been reviewed? That's yeah, no, it's got oh, reviews. Oh, okay, well, and it's got a review out there from Roger Ebert. Uh, even <laughs> Iron Eagle Two had that was something wasn't like a 10%, zero percent. That, that wasn't it was a zero, <laughs> and it's currently sitting at a forty three percent audience score. It's a little less than half of the audience liked it. Well. Good thing what we have three do? in here today, then. I, I hope that we have a better audience well, score of 43%. Yeah. Yeah, well. If only 43% of our audience likes us, we're in trouble. If you do like us, if you happen to be watching us on the tube, on YouTube, please boop the like button for us. It helps tell YouTube that people like us, and it'll sh shoot us out to more people. And uh, if you're listening on one of the many podcast apps that carry us, Please, if you get a chance, send it to a friend. Tell a friend about us, man. Help us spread the word. Uh, we very much appreciate everybody that's listening and taking their time today, whether you're on a drive or you're home or whatever you're doing in your office. Thanks for bringing us along with you to spend your day with you. We appreciate it. Uh, if you want to reach out and interact with the show, that's to us. We want to interact with you guys. We want to connect with our listeners. You can do that one of two, three different ways. You can email the show at thisshowistrash at gmail.com. You can ask us any questions you want. You can also leave suggestions for future movies. We'll talk about them on our mailbag segments. Also, you can reach out to us on, we're very active on our facebook.com slash badmoviesrule. Uh, we're posting on there constantly, interacting with listeners there. And if you would like a more VIP experience, lastly, you can join us on Patreon, which is patreon.com slash badmoviesrule. For as little as three bucks, you get access to the bonus episodes, bonus recordings. We keep Keep the thing rolling a little bit after the end of each episode uh, and keep going. And those are available on there as well. And then at different tiers, you can vote on episodes that come up like this one. That's how Solar Babies is here today. Yay. And uh, you can even submit awards to be read on the show as well. So come on, can't beat it. No, can't beat can't. it. Cannot. Regardless of how you choose to utilize any of those things, we are just happy that you're here listening today. So thank you very much. You guys ready to jump into this movie? Let's oh, I can't it. wait. Okay, so let me let me try and set the scene here. <laughs> the it's a, basically it's a movie about hyper capable adolescents who Check. help. Wait, we've we're, we we've seen that before. <laughs> yes, well, any dystopian future <laughs> seems even to be, not dystopian. Yes. future. Oh, you're right. That's Iron true. Eagle. Iron Eagle. <laughs> Dude, where's my car? Prayer of the Roller Boys. Dude, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, hyper-capable teenagers that basically help a glowing marble save the world, right? I mean, is yes. that... I called it Roy. Roy? Pretty much. Roy Orbison. <laughs> <clears throat> and henceforth shall be known as Roy Orbison. Yeah, I didn't like the name Orbison. they gave it, so I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah Roy. Roy's good. Roy Orbison. You know, it was yeah. a very mysterious and power to, powerful device. Yeah, it, was. it was. Yes. It's a and, hell of a light they shown on it to make it look like that. And they, well, they can only do it on the close-ups. You notice in the wide shots, they couldn't afford no, to no, make it glow. No, no, uh, no. They're basically trying to save the world from the E-Police. Oh, is that? It was E? The E-Police, which it is like... E-P. I, I, e I thought it was E-D. 
Oh. Oh, yeah. They got pills no. for that. I did not name, not then. <laughs> well, maybe by then. It's supposed to be in the future, but... Oh, it's EP. They yeah, look like a, an ED to e me. police, but either way. I'm like, that's about right. They seem pretty like, That's impotent, like but. e-cigarettes and email, but but for cops, I, I mean, guess. basically, yeah. it's like, well, it's the future, so it's going to be the e-police. The future! It's be right. Me. And yeah, if they had right. made this in the 2000s, it would have been the i-police. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> right? <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, and the opening, so you were on Green Lantern. The yeah. opening expo dump was almost approaching Green Lantern territory. It just well, was. They were just like, the Protectorate, blah, blah, the Chicanis and Bodai, and I'm like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> blah, blah. I'm what? like, where's, where's my scroll? Just give me the scroll. I listened to it twice, and I couldn't track what was going on. <laughs> the only thing we were missing no. was meat moops and boop poops. And... <laughs> you, just, you can't just throw... A bunch of made-up words at the audience right in the first minute over a voiceover. Oh. In Sector 69, there is no water. <laughs> and they and they didn't even get anybody good to do it. It wasn't no. like... It was the dude from the no, movie. it was Charles Durning. It was the guy from Spy Yeah, Hard. I mean, which... which He's all right, yeah. but he's not... I mean, Morgan Freeman obviously wasn't available. <laughs> oh, no, my goodness. Could you imagine? The budget would have been $35 million at that point, but still... In, no. It would have made the lame X more enjoyable. <laughs> Insert no. bad Morgan Freeman uh, impression here. <laughs> now, these teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> have a glowing ball. Have a glowing ball. <laughs> and my friend Andy. <laughs> All right, sorry. Uh, <laughs> the sisters weren't going to let them escape. Right. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, so the, whole, the first thing we get is an unsanctioned skateball game between the Scorpions and the Solar babies. Of course, that's that's hardcore. You always do, yeah. I mean, yeah. Why could they name themselves something scary? Why is their team the Solar Babies? Like well, they're the children of the sun. Is that what I, it's supposed to be? Apparently, I, I think they were Californian. Uh, this definitely took place in the desert, just outside LA. Yeah, it definitely did. <laughs> Except they didn't. They actually shot the whole thing in Spain. Really? I, I was certain that that's what they did until I went and looked it up. And I was like, oh, they went on location. No wonder there's a $25 million budget. They, yeah, you, you can find desert like a few miles from the studio <laughs> in LA. <laughs> Honestly, there's a whole lot of open desert out there. I would just ask Iron Eagle. They shoot all of their stuff <laughs> in Southern California. <laughs> right. Iron Eagle. I they, mean, well, dude, maybe Iron Eagle was filming. This was 86. So the first Iron Eagle well, they been They had the. the uh, <laughs> The desert reserved, yeah, I guess, for did. Iron Eagle. They had yeah. to go all the way to Spain. They had to go to Spain. Chappie and, and yeah. Doug no, Masters. Arizona? No, we're going to Spain. <laughs> it was half price. It was. <laughs> the movie's kind of like Prayer of the Roller Boys meets Tank Girl, right? Yeah. In that they even, like, even the leader of the Scorpions kind of was like a knockoff of Gary Lee. From or was Gary Lee a knockoff of this guy? Well, this guy came first, but I feel like he's so less cool than Gary no, Lee. No, Gary Lee was cool. That Gary Lee gets credit for doing it. First, even though he was second. Yeah, Gary Does that make was, sense? Gary Lee was cool. He had the man perm. Did you ever end up seeing Prayer of the Roller Boys? No. He no, had a he mullet, had the mullet and a perm. perm. <laughs> yes. At the same a permullet? Permullet. Per yeah, he had a permullet. And he even when when Gaviel, which is this lame version of Gary Vee in this movie, um, pulls up, he's got a mullet, but he's shaved the sides, right? And yeah. he's got the like Brian Bosworth uh, earrings yeah, right, in. Right, stuff. right. He even you know skates up and does a little razzle dazzle. Did the razzle dazzle, <laughs> and then and he didn't have the per mullet that was just no. like flying in the wind either when no. he did the razzle dazzle. It wasn't cool. Not it cool showed he meant business though. It well, but you know what looks like you don't. What doesn't look like you mean business is their freaking skateball outfits. No. Dude, they had pads strapped to bare skin. Okay, you ever sweated like playing any kind of sport? Yeah, and you have pads not strapped fun. to bare skin. Imagine chafing the nightmare. chafing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And underneath their their thigh pads, you could tell they still have little shorty shorts on. Yep. Like like I want to play skateball, but I also still want my nuts to be restricted. So we got to make sure <laughs> we've got these shorty <laughs> shorts and like Larry Bird's all they got like twenty Larry Birds out there. <laughs> We got to make sure that we got a chance of one popping out the bottom of these shorts. <laughs> and but you know what the, the coolest thing of all was? Hmm. The flashlights strapped to the roller skates. Oh, yeah. The, the, the footlights. footlights. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite headlights, but yeah. no, that's well, true. You see, it's, you know, it's, you would think being skateball, they'd needed to see the ball on the on the ground, right? Yeah, right. but so he turned on these the big stadium lights. and Oh, yeah. They turn all that stuff. But how about the game itself? Sucks. All, all it is is you just have to put it in the thing in the middle. Right. Yeah. That seems to be like super easy. 
It's yeah. like roundo and, hockey. <laughs> yeah. And right? you're like doing, it's like lacrosse. And you would think there would be some hitting, some elbows being thrown, like no. roller derby style. No, it's just okay. I couldn't even tell if they had to go and like, or while you, like you're playing half court basketball one on one back in the day as a kid. Okay, you gotta go check it. Yeah, yeah is that they what they were doing? They have to go check. You gotta. Do, I, okay, I would just camp the thing where it comes out, right? And just just score <laughs> repeatedly, right. right in. I'm like, Ugh. Right. didn't really think this yeah, way. Really camping, <laughs> Alan Johnson. <laughs> Sorry. Well, he was more concerned about the choreography of the <laughs> skating. Well, the skating looked beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Why couldn't they play basketball instead? <laughs> I mean, that, so that would have been amazing. <laughs> so much better. Oh, my gosh. All right, there were three three observers. This is what we first see while they're playing each other. they got the good guys and the bad guys. Yep. There's three people watching the game. There's one. There's there's the deaf helmet kid. Creepy little kid. Got Creepy it. Creepy little kid. I don't remember Creepy what his kid. name is. I already forgot. Is it? Is it Daniel? Daniel. Uh, Daniel? Yeah, Daniel. 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 There's, well, you call him the Falconer before the yeah, show he's a started. Falconer. We're just going to call him the Falconer. The Falconer so is Falconer. like this moody. What was he like? Death Star? Or I, Death something. Star. Sure. Yeah. His name was Death Star. Dead Star. Oh, God, <laughs> and I don't know. And then Falconer. Star Star. Whatever. Falconer. <laughs> And then the E police, we see this guy that looks like the SS is right. standing up on the ridge. <laughs> he was, He's got he was aviators dressed. on in the dead of night. Okay. Go back to your <laughs> 1945 picture of Nazi Germany. This guy's outfit's straight out of the SS. Yeah, that they're wearing. It looked I like mean, it was made out of like rubber. Vinyl rubber. Yeah. Vinyl, yeah. yeah. Like, bro, that's not breathing in the desert. No. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, it's dry out there, so it's holding the moisture. Richard in, Jordan had to have lost 50 pounds making this movie. That's like a true sauna suit. Seriously. Yeah, right. Seriously. And there's layers and layers, and you have the whole thing popping out of there. And so the E-police roll in, and they're like, you are in violation of, I don't know, being playing skateball when you're not supposed to, or whatever stupid reason it is. It's just to the chase them all off. You're playing on field A when field B is clearly open. <laughs> right. Field A had been reserved already. And this is where we find out that these kids, these adolescents, basically live in a prison. There's no rules outside the gate. That's <laughs> That's an orphanage where they're indoctrinated to eventually grow up and serve the e police, right? Yeah, and doing well, do it's all an that stuff. Orphanage, right? It's really a jail. It's really a jail. Even though the warden that runs the jail doesn't want to run it like a jail, he kind of lets them outside once in a while. He says it keeps it looks them around. The other way, yeah, it looks the other right. Way. Makes I them feel that. like they're getting away with something. Right, that's fine. Except it is a prison because his character's name is literally the warden. Yes, right. <laughs> Okay, well, and it's Charles it, Durney. You could be a warden of the state, though, too, or I, a warden well, of a... They all are, technically, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And uh, the kids, it's important as they all kind of scatter and they hide in these mines and they go through all these tunnels, that Helmet Kid ends up accidentally starting a Minecraft. Mine, I was say Minecraft. Right, he was playing Minecraft, Mi for, mine real. Cart, for real. For <laughs> real, real Minecraft. Minecraft. Yeah, he was playing Minecraft. A minecart that's got these ah. tracks, these tracks that are... Going straight to a wall for some reason. Don't ask questions. He didn't okay. continue to build. And <laughs> he, didn't. He, he ran out of TNT. <laughs> <laughs> His pickaxe had broken. Okay. He didn't have anything else. He didn't have any materials to make a new one. The whole plot starts through this accident. The The mine cart crashes through the stone wall, which is a actually a hollow open area behind it. And this is where we find... Roy or Orbison. Yes, Roy uh, Orbison's there. Which is the MacGuffin of the movie. It's this yes. glowing marble, it's basically. Continuum Transfunctioner. It, it, it is all of those things, right? It's right. the crystal skull. It's whatever you want to say it is. It's the thing that everybody wants to get. In the stupid expo dump at the beginning, they talk of Bodai, this orb that will come to Earth and release the water. Because, of course, it's however far in the future and there's no water and the entire earth is a desert and the bad guys control the water and they decide who gets water and when so that's what i'm saying it's like tank girl meets yep. prayer of the roller boys Pretty meets much. water world meets reverse water world reverse right water world. <laughs> yep but there's right. no drinkable water right. wetland is not a myth i've seen it <laughs> 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 it's basically what's going on here but this this glowing orb roy orberson uh Performs a miracle immediately because Deaf Kid can hear now. Yeah, right. He broke his he broke his headphone. Why his his uh, robot ears? Yeah, his robot ears, whatever ears. they called them. Yeah, and yeah, he could hear. And the orb immediately regretted because the kid started going like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the orb's like, <laughs> oh, dang it! Shut he, up! He, don't he hear went us. full. He went full seagull from <laughs> Finding Nemo mode after he could hear. 
Mine? 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 <laughs> oh, mine? Oh my I'm in gosh. a mine? Mine? <laughs> So the next morning, Grok, Grok. This is all the names in this. Grog, movie are, no, Grog. no, it's Grok. that's a different movie. Grok. That's a different movie. Uh, who knows? Grok is the SS officer, the leader of the E Police. Well, he's not the the main leader, but he's the only he's the representation of the leadership in this movie. And he goes to see the warden. He's like, "You've got to punish them for this. Why do you let them do this? I'm sweating my ass off in this. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how hot this outfit is?" <laughs> I got to be out here yelling at you. Yeah, he's got this pleather suit, and he's super butch. Wasn't that the same outfit from <laughs> Armed and Dangerous? It was like a leather, a pleather version of the same outfit. Yes. Yeah. Yes, from Armed and Dangerous. And we never saw the backside. It may have been, uh, you know, it was like It was office clipped. You know those clips yeah. where you get in the yeah, office? Right. Like a, yeah, it's like a... <laughs> office clipped on. <laughs> like a, a, a surgical... No, it was, yeah, it was just tied like a Halloween <laughs> costume. <laughs> And and the, in the scene, he's like threatening the warden or whatever, and the warden's gardening his like one flower that he has. Yeah, he's putting a few drops of water on it, mm-hmm. and then he aims. He's got like a death stick, right? Yeah. It's, how did he get that thing fired up to where he wilted the flower? I don't know. <sighs> Just it's sticking in the ground. It's like there's a fire, but. It, it, it almost looked like it was like designed to be a death stick. Like I hold it towards things and it kills them. Yeah. But then he, we never see it again the rest of the movie. No. We're like, oh, this is this guy's see- secret and special and awesome weapon. Right. No, that's it. Death stick. No, it just kills flowers. No, it's just one time to threaten this guy's daffodils and then we're never going to see it again for the rest of the movie. Yes. You, oh, you like your peonies? Goodbye. Mm. Kiss them goodbye. He's a, here's more jargon. <laughs> He's a strictor from the E-Police maiming squad. What is why? I felt like I was back in equilibrium again. The fourth consigliere of the Tetragamatron. <laughs> Let's just make up a something that's never been made up before. Like, Sounds scary. I'm the it does. stricter. Doesn't it does? Stricter. He's the stricter. Yeah. That sounds... He's here to kick your ass. The stricter. <laughs> oh well we meet the uh the squad. This is where we finally get you know, we couldn't really see him during the game because all their helmets on and stuff. And so this is in the yard while they're getting punished. They gotta do twenty cubic meters. They gotta dig a hole, basically, is their yep. punishment for so now we've got holes coming into this movie. Like skate ball, right. And we meet the guys and the gals. So it's well, there's Jason, right? He's the lead with the jawline. Yep. Right. We've got uh Glasses dude. Glasses Metron. He sucks. Uh, he, Metron, sucks. Metron, he sucks. He sucks. He just sucks. sucks. He sucks. I'm glad we're all in agreement. <laughs> Metron um, sucks. sucks. I, I'm, I'm not going to say it because we are a family friendly show, yes. but <laughs> it says in his notes that he does not like Metron. I, I don't like Metron. <laughs> Stupid glasses, dude. There's rhymes with truck. <laughs> Metron. There's t- <laughs> there's Tara, Jamie Gertz. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, Best one of the group. Rabbit. He's even worse than Metron to me. Rabbit. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And <laughs> oh, was he the one? Rab, Rab, uh, he was the really good beatboxer. Oh, oh. that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's Tug, who I love. Tug. Tug, Tug was a.k.a. Wally from. Wally. Yeah, uh, I like Tug. Winners take all. Tug. Tug was. I like Tug. Peter DeLuise. Peter DeLuise. Son of Dom DeLuise. That's awesome. And much more in shape. Well, yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. yeah. But, dude. And this was 86. That means he went back to back. 86, Solar yeah. Babies, 87, Winners Take All. Yeah. Well, what a run. Yeah. <laughs> run. I mean, does it, does it get any better than know. that That's in the a, movie industry? doubled up right back there. To back, back to back. Back to back. I'm saying. And belly to belly. We got to get <laughs> Peter DeLuise on the show. We should. We absolutely should. Any okay. DeLuise. I, I'll take all the Deloises. I loved him in in uh, Winners Take All. Dude, he was He's one of awesome. the best, one of the parts that made it great. Was him and his bud there, the redheaded kid. Yeah, yeah. All right. Meanwhile, we should also say we meet a couple other characters. We get the Falconer. He's like drawing dirt circles in the yard. Like this means something, right? right? I just like remember Weird I'm Al like, there, the, with the mashed potatoes. This means something. I was like, is he drawing a play up in the sand? What's he doing? He's like, okay, are you go here, go here, skinny post? Go, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to fake to you, <laughs> throw to him, right. you lateral here, and we're going to get the... Except they're playing with a ball of dirt, so yeah. it just explodes anytime somebody tries to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> but before you can do anything, because we have to establish again how much of a dick uh, Gaviel... Yeah. What a terrible name for a bad guy, Gaviel. It's, it sounds so pretentious. Yes. It's like it should be, you should be saying it with a British accent, like... Gaviel. Gaviel. Oh, yes. Gaviel. Um... Gavil comes over and he kicks his like basically like a kid wrecking hey, somebody's sandcastle. He castle. runs his play, man. How are they going to know what to do now? <laughs> no, They're not no. going to know. It's going to be a free for all. 
Right. And uh, he chases him off. And then at the end, he's like, yeah, get out of here. That guy was a real moon, right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> the worst burn ever. <laughs> what the hell? The hell? He's that a moon. So <laughs> hey, gonna, you're a Jupiter. I'm going I'm to start using that around here. <laughs> well, Mel's being a real moon this episode. <laughs> what does that even mean? Because he's drawing dirt, drawing circles in the dirt. I'll show you a comet. That's right. <laughs> also, Gavil kind of looks like James Vanderbeek. I don't know if it was just me. But he, outside you know, of the stupid hair. You mention it a little bit. Yes. A little bit. You mention it, yeah. But he's basically like a walking 80s villain stereotype. I feel like they 3D print these guys in the back room or something whenever yeah. they've got to make one of these movies. And they just change the mullet. And type. they just <laughs> change. The guy you want to be, but he's evil. That's right. Right. That's right. It's it, uh, William Zabka was the first one. And then ever since then, they just used him as a model and 3D printed the rest of them off in all of them. I don't think they had 3D printers in the... In Hollywood, they did. Oh, yeah. Hollywood. fair enough. Yep. Yeah, they yep. they could do anything back then. That's how they made the Terminator robots, right? I thought they were real. I can't back that up. I don't know. <laughs> Where am I? Okay, we'll never know. <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> we're learning the cast. <laughs> oh, all right. So the so the crew goes back into the room and they're like, "Oh, Daniel's here. Cool, the little kid. Oh, wait, you can hear. That's crazy." And they meet. They all meet Bodai at the same yeah. time, or Roy, Roy Orbison. Orbison. The kid says, look at my ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely not hanging out the bottom of my shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I guess we'll say this now, and we'll get to the examples later. There is some uncomfortable pedo energy in this movie at a few different <laughs> really spots. Is. Okay? A few different spots. We'll, I don't, I, it had to have been purposeful. It had to have been, because it's just too much of a coincidence. And it, anyway, Bodai comes out. And it starts thunderstorming inside the locker room or their house or whatever. Like, yeah, they're getting sweaty. Yeah. And, yeah. It's just, and it's just, and again, because it wasn't shot very well, you, they never showed you the ceiling. So for all we know, there's no roof on the place. And it wasn't until it ended that they panned up and you could see that there was a ceiling right. and it was raining indoors. Yep. And the whole time I'm like, okay, you guys never get water. Y'all are dancing, kicking each other. I'm like, somebody grab a bucket. <laughs> Like, like you, that would have been my first instinct. <laughs> you know no, I'm saying water, water. Okay, right. Get all our buckets and cups and whatever we got in here. Anything. Dump the gold and get the water. Right. <laughs> like Renaissance flute music playing. It's like like you're at the Renaissance fair. Like the soundtrack right. in this yeah. movie was weird. Kicking it and They're washing doing their list. feet. They're just kicking it around, smacking each other in the face with it. Yeah, and right. then it stopped, and they're all like, and then the one guy Metron again, who sucks, it's like, oh, it's got to be the meds they got us on. Like, that's why you're all soaking wet, genius. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just all yeah. had a joint yeah. hallucination, and you're all so, soaking so wet. you just like totally OD'd and then just sweated all, the, and that's why you're wet, buddy. He was watching cops. <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> bad boys, bad boys. Oh, what is it? It's yes, a, that is it. What is it? <laughs> what? It's a ball. It likes to be held. Oh, yes, I can feel it likes right. to be held. Yes. Right. Like, what is this thing? That's very... They uh, never explain it. <laughs> it's a ball. It's a ball. It's a and, shiny, happy ball. And, and it, it likes to be held. It likes to be held. Oh. Like, am I? what am I watching? Is, <laughs> the, is the yes. hedgehog about to come out from behind the... T- <laughs> Table over there, or Mine's what? The stepchildren. I, I can feel it likes. To be able, meanwhile, the falconer's up in the vent. Like, shh, you don't see me. I'm sitting up here in the vent. I've got my owl. Hey, and that, <laughs> that kid's uh, caressing a ball. <laughs> but it's time to go to the propaganda meeting. I, I mean, the exercise yard to yes. do exercise time. <laughs> you you made a face. Explain <laughs> what you don't like the exercise scene. The, What's wrong with the exercise? just just the 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 roller skates? Why? <laughs> just, what? just, 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 just. Why they had they had to shoehorn it in here I, again, kind of like they did with the Roller Boys. Right. It could have just been a normal post-apocalyptic movie where they ran and walked everywhere. Right. Right. But they skated a- anytime they could. They were skating, and even in the exercise yard, there's barely enough room for everybody to go in a circle. There. You ever do that at the beach? <laughs> you yeah. Oh yeah. Roller skating in the desert. Right. Yeah. Right. Like I roller right. skate. I hit a pebble and I fall down. Okay. Yeah, and there's see, just rocks everywhere. See, now we're talking. Well, this is this is a specially uh, concreted area for them to skate to their propaganda. Oh my god! Lesson of the day. 
who is this like president <laughs> that is like really into like roller skating? I don't know when they're doing they got like roller this video of the e-police and, and they're doing like a dance number right on the TV and then the lady's talking about feel the flow, feel the bodular flow. The e-police means the use of ultra tech weapons. Enjoy the stun. I'm like all this kind of weird stuff, right? And I'm like, what the hell is going on in this movie? The the e police and kind of made me think of the dream police. <laughs> you said that we're gonna oppress you, but we're gonna do it looking fabulous. That's right. <laughs> Here's some skates, and they're skating around, and all of a sudden, Glavio, because he's you know again doesn't miss an opportunity to be a dick. Wish.com <laughs> Gary Lee is <laughs> just like, hey Jason, watch me sexually assault your girlfriend over here. And just starts licking her in the face and right, everything, yeah. and he's like wagging his tongue at her, like ah. ah, ah. That was like, like an '80s <laughs> mating ritual, I've, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, at the time I was only a child, so I didn't know of such things. But in the yeah, '80s, I guess uh, that's how they got down. Was it like the most colorful tongue one, <laughs> I the woman, or I don't know? I mean, like kind of like a Birds of Paradise thing, where if they're showing their ass or whatever. Whoever has the most colorful <laughs> ass wins. If there's anybody that's like oh. ancient and was a teenager in the '80s, where we were just kids in the '80s, right? Please Break let us know. Is that how you got business done? That's how you close the deal on the 80s? You got to wag your tongue at them and then just grab them and lick their face? Because right now that's all we've got to go off of. That's all we just I, This is a historical work. <laughs> <laughs> we got to assume dating rituals in the that's 80s right. consisted of tongue wagging and face licking. <laughs> it had to have. You know the, the most disappointing part of all that? What's that? Nobody said let's roll. No, oh, that's true. They, they missed a perfect opportunity. They did. You're right. That's they really true. Did. They had all, right. all kinds of opportunity. And there's this whole Not scene once. where they whack Bodai around like a skateball, and I was like, uh, he likes being played with. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that yeah. tracks. That tracks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you never... a little bit. He loves it. <laughs> notice he never turned blue. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. He didn't. He had no problem releasing his energy. No, no but he almost vomited no. when Rabbit starts beatboxing in this scene. And I did anybody else cringe? I just started cr like, like just immediately they have to have the black guy start beatboxing. Well, he I was terrific at it. He, <laughs> but he wasn't even beatbox. I felt bad for the guy. I felt no. honestly, I felt bad for him. I felt like the director was like, "You know how to beatbox, well, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> you know how to play you know bass. What? You like, know how to play bass. Go ahead and do it." And then poor this poor guy who didn't know how was just right. Like, Making these weird noises. With well, his Run DMC was a little outside the budget. So. Yes, well, that's true. The thing about it, that guy was probably a classically trained actor from like Juilliard. That's he what probably I'm saying. Was, yeah. and, and now he's, you know, they're like, oh, he's just uh, beatbox, hey, you know, beatbox. like like you do. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's that's how it felt. I was so cringed by, out by the whole thing. You know what though? <sighs> oh, well, yeah. I've what I've heard do? in the future, the distant future, yes, that the humans are dead. The humans are dead. They are. That's right. They are dead. They're poisonous gases, and we yeah. poison their asses. That's right. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's let's uh, skip forward here a little bit. The Falconer takes the cube. So he's watching them all have this like emotional spiritual experience with the ball down in the playing oh, it, field. Oh, didn't they do like the, the circle thing? The circle just, thing. They all. Oh, go. hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta yeah. do the circle thing. Okay. Do the circle thing. Uh, uh, there we go. That's right. <laughs> and uh, my ball just glowed. <laughs> <laughs> and Falconer, Falconer is just up there watching. Like I don't have any friends, and so he steals the marble, and oh. and now they're all like. We well, we got to go after it because Daniel went after it, and like we got to go after Daniel. And so they have this momentary scene where, like, again, Metron's like, we shouldn't go. They, yeah, they had their worked in some democracy in here. Yep, but he yep. changed his vote at the last minute, so they're all like, all right, we're going after him. We're gonna go get Bodai, and we're gonna go get Daniel. And it's the easiest place to escape from ever. They literally just walk skate out the door. Out the door. Yeah. <laughs> no guards. No. No. There no was towers. One, there was one little camera thing that came out of a rock, and he. Hit it, and then Rabbit hit it with a rock, and that was it. They were a Scott done, out. So maybe it wasn't a prison. Well, I, I mean, there's know. guys walking around with guns all over this place, <laughs> yeah. but nobody at the door. <laughs> well, they're just for show. Grok is like, if we find them, if I don't sweat to death first, and uh, that we're going to what surgically alter them. That was the thing they were going to do. Grok is going to hunt them down I guess, and surgically yeah. alter. They never say what that means. Like, are they oh, going to get a lobotomy? We castration? saw it already. 
We did? Is that Ice, Ice Pirates? Pirates? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, they're going to get castrated. But how's that work for Jamie Gertz, then? I, I, I don't know. She gets an adedictomy? She, I, Maybe. I don't know what that is. Well, it says something to do with Google Perfect. Ace. Okay, no thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and also, Gaviel is now an e-cop for some reason. Like, he's been a he, part of this orphanage. upgraded or they, something. Yeah. But they never show him getting upgraded. He's no. just standing next to Grok, like, in a uniform. He's like, oh, I'm a cop now. We're like, okay. The movie does this all the time. They don't show things happening. They just are happening. Give this guy a gun. Give this guy a gun. And we get a roller skating montage set to Fanta. love will set you free. How'd you think of, what'd you think of that little Smokey Robinson Diddy, all suddenly in the middle of the movie. Smokey Robinson had to live with that the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> They're roller skating through the desert. You can see, first of all, there's a couple shots where you can tell they really can't skate. And they're yeah, literally right. running they're, through the sand on roller skates, trying to keep up. And then they'll try and go for a few steps. They can't. Then they'll can't run. Can't get them to roll. I'm like, yes. bro, get we, these poor actors out of these roller skates. I like to ice skate <laughs> on blacktop. <laughs> How does that work? It doesn't. About as well as yeah. this was yeah, working yeah, in the sand well. for them. Yeah, but you couldn't pick something better? No. Anything. Have, say they had hover shoes I or mean, something. I don't know. Hell, recycle Eye of the Tiger for all I care. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, you're you're mad about the level set you free song from Smokey Robbins. That didn't quite get the blood pumping like an Eye of the Tiger did. Right. Right? It's anything. Anything would have been Give better. me two tickets to paradise. Something. Yeah, Eddie Money. Eddie Money. Something. Yes, exactly. Something. This was what not about it, the, Smokey. The was it the they boys could have just had rabbit beatbox the whole way back. over there? Or you could have put some, <laughs> put, <laughs> put put it's tricky. I don't care something. It's yeah. tricky would have been better because they're trying to roller skate oh. through sand. That was that's a little tricky. tricky. That's fine. <laughs> well, the e cops show up and they've got a motorcycle with dual sidecars that they have to take a long time to get them apart so they can chase <laughs> after them <laughs> with their two motorcycles. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> activate the whip move. Let's get into this. There's a gap. How far do you think that gap in that bridge was? 50 feet. I thought I guessed least. it about 50 at feet least. at least. The bridge is out. There's a cliff, a sheer cliff face on both sides. Like, I don't know, a thousand foot ravine to the bottom. Yeah. Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. There's a bridge that's got a 50 foot section in the middle of it. And it's a flat bridge. It's not like an incline. Right. No. It's a flat bridge. Flat. Maybe even... Kind of a little bit on the <laughs> incline the towards the hole. Towards I mean, it was. <laughs> it's, it's declining because it fell. Right, out, it right. fell in, right? Right. And these guys, I, they call it the whip. Not in this one, but later on, like they're like Jason, the whip move. And they're like starts. They're using centrifugal force, and they start spinning around in, in a group. This is like when the Mighty Ducks did the flying V, yeah, but right. way dumber. Right. And they supposedly get so fast in a circle that they can start slingshotting people. And they clear this 50-foot gap, all of them. And how's that work for the last guy? It, well, I was just going to say, <laughs> you spin because around? eventually you get to one, there's nobody to throw you. No. Or even when there's two guys left, you only got one guy spinning you. Yeah. it's Right? You lost some horses there, right? they, and you're not going to get the force. There is no way in hell you're slingshotting people across this 50-foot gap no. on roller skates. No. We have a glowing ball, and you're worried about a gap. They didn't have the ball. They at this didn't point. have the ball. They could have even explained that. Like maybe it was the magic of, of Bodai if it had yeah. been in one of their backpacks. If like they had e. Roy Orbison, that right? wouldn't have been a problem. Like they could have done ET made the bikes fly. Right. right. But they didn't even have the ball. No, they could have. They just had the power of friendship, and that was it. You got to be the ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I almost yeah. died laughing when I saw this. <laughs> It was ridiculous. It was so ridiculous. I was, uh, I I was biting it. my nails on the edge of my chair. <laughs> You're like, oh, my gosh, gonna make are they going to make it? Oh, man. It's like the, the last one. Is he going like to make it? way better than the bus jump Here, speed. They finally got the bikes un <laughs> unlatched. Here come the bikes. <laughs> and did you see what happened with the bikes? So the, the guy is now they're chasing him and like, oh, crap. They made it across, so he turns it sideways to skid and stop before yeah. he goes off the bridge. And then the other bike comes up behind it and hits it. But in between when the first one skid and the second one hits it, the driver of the motorcycle just disappears. Gone. He's just not there. They're like, well, what are we going to do? When the second guy hits him, the guy's going to get hurt. Put a stuntman in there? No. A dummy? No. We'll just we'll just make the driver vanish. Empty. <laughs> right. Empty bike. <laughs> Empty bike. Empty bike. No one will notice. You're the one person that actually brought that up. That's not, I guarantee Ever. that's not true. Ever. <laughs> There's another one that happens later that's even worse, too. Even worse. And you know what those cars look like, too, that were coming down? 
Remote control cars. Kias? Oh, yeah. Every, all of these have to have, all these movies have to have these dune buggies. I mean, right? that thing looked like Free a Jack dune buggy I would play with in my yard as a kid. Megaforce had them. Delta Force had them. They all have these dune buggies in them. I don't know why. It's like the same 10 dune buggies just kept getting loaned out to every movie production in the 80s. They're like, we need some dune buggies? I got a dune buggy well, guy. Well, we didn't blow any of these up yet. You can <laughs> use these. You're not going to drive a limo in the desert. I guess not. Yeah. I guess this one, it actually made sense, but they are they use them in everything. Right. All right. So the Falconer is out kind of ahead of He left before everybody, and so he finds this camp full of these what seem to be like Native American. They're supposed to be like, you are Chikari, and I am, I am or Chikani. <laughs> and he's a Chikani, but he didn't know he was a Chikani. He just felt drawn to his people or whatever, right? It was Burning Man. But they were basically just carnies. Yeah. yeah, right. I mean, yeah. they're like in an old amusement they're park. Carnies, yeah. They found they found. Uh, <laughs> oh, all right. What's this? Oh, we got like the uh, mannequins from the sideshows and everything. They got else the wax figure. Which, by the way, did you see the one wax figure that kept blinking? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you have one job, brother. <laughs> one job. Your wax figure. Don't blink. <laughs> Don't blink. And he's just over there going. Uh. <laughs> the sand in my eye. <laughs> I got sand in my eye. Like, bro, it was a three-second shot. They showed him for three seconds, unless they had just been rolling on him. He probably, they probably just said, all right, forget it. (laughs) Everybody's getting pissed because this guy's (laughs) blinking all the time. They probably had to do this scene 150 times because this fool (laughs) kept blinking. Right. Well, he's shooting compressed air into his eyeball. (laughs) He's at the eye doctor. Okay. Hold your eye open. Oh, Hold your eye open. Blow in it. <laughs> that is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the worst part is when it's coming, the second eye. That's right. Right. That's right. I don't have glaucoma. <laughs> 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 All right. So so the Falconer brings Roy Orbison to the Chikani, and the Chikani are like, yo, man, I think we could get like 20 bucks for this thing, man. <laughs> Right, you can put your weed in there, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just buy some underwear. These guys are just wearing flaps out right. here in the it's, desert, well, right? That saves some time. <laughs> I guess so. It's post-apocalyptic desert. It's not no. great armor when there's a random laser that hits you in the chest. No. <laughs> I, th- I thought of Jim Cotta immediately. We have that movie <laughs> where they're just hanging out, and the freaking random arrow just flies in from off screen and nails people. <laughs> 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 Here's this guy. He's standing there. He's looking up. The owl screeches, right? Right. And the falconer's like, oh, I speak owl. Oh, crap. I'm going to get out of here. He gets up and dips. And then all of a sudden, laser beam straight you know, to the was, chest. You know, I was thinking when the laser beams came in. <laughs> what? I was thinking Alexander was coming in with his robot. Oh, yeah. The green laser. <laughs> get the green laser. Get <laughs> Basically, the Ebelis have caught up to the falconer and now are going to burn down this Chikani village. Right. Which turns out yeah. has a famous origin. It does, apparently. Yes. Uh, so I, I froze frame it at the right time. <laughs> Xanadu! That's right. <laughs> was the name of the theme park. It's crazy. I thought it was, I thought they were going to look and say like it was like Las Vegas or something buried under the ground because the sign almost looked like one of the signs from Vegas, but it was just Xanadu. Xanadu. Theme yeah. park. Okay. Like, no wonder this place was abandoned. Oh. <laughs> That's where they got all the roller skates from. Where they, yeah, they left over <laughs> roller skates. Yeah, tell you Holy what, it's, crap! No. It, it's part of the timeline. Is this? This is a. Have, is this our third roller skating movie? <laughs> this is. This, it, I yeah, think they're all in I the same universe. Is. Unbelievable. The I, same who timeline. Knew, who knew there was a roller skating? So universe. Xanadu was first, then Prayer of the Roller Boys because it wasn't quite that dystopian yet, and then in the far future we have Solar Babies. This I guess, is what's left. Yeah. The roller skating trilogy they, you never knew you always came wanted. Across Xanadu, they said, "Hey, <laughs> roller skates, all right." The and e, he's out. The E police come in and they burn down the Carney's whole village. Uh, Gaviel is there and he kills the Falconer's owl and he's like whipping it around in the air, like, "Oh, kill this owl, kill this owl!" And did you said, "Did you notice the Beastmaster reference?" Remember in Beastmaster? I don't know if you guys ever saw it. They there was a scene where Beastmaster was supposed to get upset, and you could tell they just put an eyedropper of tears underneath both of his eyes. Like when they cut to him, they were already halfway down, but they you could tell they didn't start at his eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> they just like placed I two did, tears. I did I did notice that on the Falconer. And they did it on like, the Falconer right after like that. Mid cheek, his cheek tears were coming down. Like huh, eyes totally fine. Yeah, but it's just got a single cheek. 
tear streaming down. <laughs> he was dehydrated. <laughs> back to the back to the uh, bad guy headquarters. They've got the one Chikani who I thought was dead because he took a laser beam to the chest. He's like, put him on the ant table. And there's just ants crawling all over. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? That, yeah. It's well, they, exactly they kind of thought. explained it afterwards, but well, at first yeah. I'm just like, what the frig? They're just going to have a, they got a thing of ants. They're they just going to pour on, on people. Fire ant hill or what? <laughs> that's a, that's a hell of a torture device. I'm <laughs> dude. But then when they said what it was, that's, that's awesome. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. It was that's one of the cool. coolest things in the movie. Probably the coolest thing in the movie. It's a table and you put people on it and it manifests whatever the thing they're most afraid of is. Greatest fear. And this dude was afraid of ants. Yeah. There, and he crapped himself on the thing. You're in a dystopian <laughs> hellscape, and you're afraid of ants. Aren't like, you? Oh, not no. ants. <laughs> those, those things bite. They now hurt. I'm going to fight for my life every single um, day. I'll smash them. It's an ant. Ugh. Yeah, I'll smash them all. Although when they held, so Gaviel, you know, whatever, Grok is a, like, you didn't tell me about the orb or whatever. He didn't know there was anybody else there. He holds Gavial's hand over the table, and it looks like the flesh is falling off from his hand. Yeah. That was cool. That was cool. The whole device is cool. Now, that is a worthy fear. Yeah. Just like having my whole flesh just slough off my body. Yeah. That's that's disgusting. But again, they, there's this cool thing, and they just never go back to it ever no. again. That's, I was that's expecting the, to see more. That's the theme of the movie, Nothing. though. They, they have this one thing. Mm-hmm. And then they move on. And they yeah. they could have came back if they had fought with Grok. They Grok should have got thrown on the table, and so his worst fear could come true. I mean that you bring it back around to the bad guy after he uses it on other people. Right. That's right. what you would Prime do. Opportunity. But then look at the warden. Yeah. God. Just never to ever no. be heard from ever again. Prison. I'm sorry. Uh, Orphan. Boys home. Orphan. Orphan. God. <laughs> Gone. Yeah, it's bad. Falcon. <laughs> Gone. After after all this interrogation, well, the owl was about the only thing they completed the. <laughs> oh, round. true. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> A little follow up, but they they're like, well, "What are we going to do now with this? You know, we got to we got to get this ball. The bad guys are really worried about this ball." He's like, "Well, I I don't know. I I know this hot magnet scientist. <laughs> we can bring it to. This is random. She's like, oh, we know she's just right around this other dune over here." <laughs> <laughs> She's just got this just magnet laboratory. Next dune over is the <laughs> magnet laboratory. Just head on over there. You got this thing. Let's let's destroy it. Yeah. It's a it could it could hold it. Now, first of all, I was thrilled that Sarah Douglas randomly showed up in this movie. She's awesome. She's from Superman 2. She was yeah. Zod's girlfriend, second in command. She was in Conan the Destroyer. She was the evil queen. She's been in so many of these 80s movies. And I She's a lovely lady because I actually follow her to this day. She's very active on social media. Awesome gal. And when I saw her, she was in here. That she was in here, I was like, "This is just the movie just went up ten notches in my estimation." But it's pointless that she's there. See, that's yeah, that's where I was pointless. thinking. Yeah. I didn't think she had a like any purpose. No, she didn't. And that's what I was like. Oh, you that? I heard you got this really powerful magnet. Oh yeah, it's right <laughs> over here. <laughs> right? Yeah, I could hold a comet if we wanted it to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Why yeah. are you in here doing studying a magnet for like it's your whole job? You're nine to five. You just come in here and you look at the magnet. Well, we gonna watch put stuff do, in here. Watch it do magnety things. Yeah. You know. What all, can I attract today? All, all day they're just like, what happens if we put this in there? <laughs> <laughs> you got a hammer by chance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is the point of this place? I'll tell you what, too. <laughs> like linebackers in the '80s were. Jealous of her shoulder pads, boy. Yo. She was that about was to put her opposite of LT, boy. She would have been hitting <laughs> some quarterbacks. She was juicing. Which brings me to my next point. Don't smoke crack. <laughs> 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 All right. So we get back to the gang. The gang has, get, gets to the burned down Carney village. They see the dead owl. They bury it because they're trying to be nice. And this is actually comes back to be a good thing for them because – the falconer sees them bury the yep. owl, and later on he repays their kindness. Buries them with a couple of rocks. A couple of rocks. You're in the desert. You can't dig a hole in the sand. Right. She would. <laughs> you don't even to, need a shovel. It to would dig. take longer to find the rocks. <laughs> it's like we yes. can't. We can't. Anybody got a shovel? No. Well, let's get some rocks That's then. <laughs> <laughs> Saw a couple rocks over three dunes down over there. 
we're not all starving for, of dehydration or anything like that. You know, <laughs> haven't had water since we left the orphanage. No big deal. Uh, it's all good because they head on to Tire Town. Let's talk about Tire Town. <laughs> they find Love the it. first village. Tire Town was kind of cool. It's just tires everywhere. And everybody works in the giant tire barn. They're burning tires. Yeah, it's a good year. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing with all these tires? They're, they're melting them down. Pulling the water out of it. For water. Right. So they're drinking tire juice, no. basically. No. That it, happens. At one point, the announcer's like telling them all the stuff that's in the water. Like, it's all acceptable levels. You know, you're good. Like, uh, I don't know if I'd be dr- I, I guess don't anybody worry about that doesn't the benzene have any water. in there, it's an acceptable <laughs> level. You know the real perk of Tire Town, though? What's that? The ladies of the night. (laughs) (laughs) I tell you, they may have had a lot of miles on them. (laughs) And uh, even though the one on the end uh, got nailed a lot, so she's flat. uh, Pristine. (laughs) That's another one. Yes. And the... (laughs) This is a perfect example of they don't the movie doesn't show anything. They show them, no. oh, we found Tire Town. The next shot, they're all dressed like Chinese rice farmers. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I'm like, when did this happen? Uh, they're all in disguise. Like, it takes five seconds. Show them getting the clothes. Just, you know what? Just go over to okay. Big Trouble in Little China set. Get some, <laughs> some costumes from over there. Slap those on. Just you know three, three dunes down. There's a bunch of tire hookers. The little dangly uh, <laughs> tire things on the... Oh, yeah. That was that was cool. Like, these they, tires weren't good enough for drinking. We made hats out of them. <laughs> Here. Come, comes with a small smelly tree. Here you go. <laughs> Hang it right on there. Oh, my gosh. And Owl Man or Falcon or whatever... He's already got a nine to five job in this place. He got there yesterday. Well, yeah. they're hiring. <laughs> hey. He's like, oh, I got a clock out. He's acting like he's worked there twenty years. We, we had a couple guys fall into the tire sludge. Yeah, see when we get off the street. Oh, Falconer, all right, you're hired. Yeah, at the w- tire water barn. <laughs> <laughs> they have great hours. The benefits suck, but you know you get to work a lot of hours. I, I don't think OSHA is a thing there. <laughs> So I'm sure they go through a lot of employees. It didn't. It didn't look like they had a lot of uh, safeguards in no, place. I can't imagine. <laughs> the unemployment rate there is probably very low. Uh, <laughs> the the gang shows up. They find the the I don't know truck that that Bodai is in and it's locked. But the Falconer gives them the combination because you know it didn't yep. do what he wanted. He, he I guess he told them I stole it because I was I wanted it to do magic for me like it did for you. It didn't, so he essentially gives Bodai back to the gang of kids or the yep. teenagers or whatever, right? Adrian Pasdar. Do you guys recognize him from anything else? The guy that played the Falconer? No. No. The only That's thing I remember him, he well, he was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for a time. He was in the show Heroes. I don't know if you remember that on NBC. Oh, I remember that show, yeah. He was the guy that show. could fly. He was like a senator. Oh, that could, was like, him? That was him. Okay. Same guy. All right. And he also does the voice of Iron Man in a lot of the animated Avengers stuff. But, yeah, when I finally realized it was him, I was like, oh, yeah, it's the guy from Heroes, for sure. Uh, anyway, Bodai is now in the hands of the kids, but they don't have him for long before there's a big fight scene, kind of. It's kind of, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> a running fight scene. A re- yeah, all the evilies show up, and they got all their dudes. They got the hubcap shield guys. Yep. It's the feds. <laughs> <laughs> They got the domino knockover guys, and you knock, you hit one, and they all yeah, like they all twelve fall of them over. fall yeah. over. You brush past them. The, you know, Gavial's there, Grok is there, and everyone's scattering like crazy, and things start on fire. Tire juice is dumping all <laughs> over the place. Tire juice going everywhere. What are you gonna do? Oh, <laughs> <What>? so <laughs> that was the 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 absolute best part of this whole thing. <laughs> So, dude drops the bag. Yeah. Yes. The ball bag. Yeah. The ball bag. Instead of picking it up, it's no, I'm going to take 30 seconds to tell you why this is a bad idea as the tire sludge is about to fall on it. <laughs> so, stay dude. here while I tell you to stop. It's not like it dropped into a crevice or it something. Dropped right it dropped right in front right of it. Right on the floor. You literally, it's right there. Bend over and pick it up. It's the whole reason you escaped and walked across <laughs> the freaking desert to get this thing. Right. And you're like, oh, we. Uh, they're like, it's like, oh, you dropped it. Dropped it. Uh, quick, quick, well, get into these now, tires and roll down the hill. Do now? How am I going to get that off the floor? <laughs> <laughs> where's the, where's that little kid? <laughs> I can't it bend was over. The little kid. That's the even funnier that was, part. It was the little kid. It tug. It was tug too. Sadly, someone we liked. It was like, yeah. no, 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 leave it. Leave it. We got to get, get out of here. It's only the entire reason we're here. It's, it's only the thing that will save humanity. <laughs> But 
I might be minorly inconvenienced. <laughs> No, just leave it. There's tire sludge coming. Seriously. we got to get these five tires they didn't burn yet. Over they even here. leave Tara behind. Jamie Gertz is left she on her own. She got left behind. And, and, yeah. and the last shot you see of her, someone's reaching around a corner, grabbing her by the face. You're like, well, she's dead. They all jump in these big, giant tires. This is their way they're going to get away. Why don't we just jump in these giant tires and roll down the hill? You ever do that? Yeah. yeah. When I was a kid. It hurts. It hurts like a you-know-what. It hurts a lot more as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> They all get out of the tires at the bottom of the hill. They got about a foot and a half away from the explosion. It's just like this small hill. And they're like, no, they see the whole thing got blowing out, up yeah. like Terra. Got out of there, not dizzy. <laughs> no, no, they're fine. But did you see what they found at the bottom of the hill? More tires? A lake. <laughs> there was a lake there, and they just acted like it didn't didn't. Yeah, water. belong. What's what? that? Yeah. Oh, uh. Who needs that? We're in the desert. Right. In the desert. Don't they care. haven't. Had anything to drink for days. Oh, what's that? Oh, a lake? Oh, oh it must okay. be benzene. Let's go this way. <laughs> yeah. And even after they escape, they don't get very far before these two moron bounty, bounty hunters. hunters. You know what, though? Them. Uh, Malice, and I don't remember what the other one's stupid name know. was. Who cares? Malice was awesome. <laughs> he Malice, reminded me of the guy from The Mummy. I, I thought he was the guy from um, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh yeah, oh, yeah the yeah. two of them were kind of yeah, like they that kind of yeah, yeah. were kind of like that duo, yep. Yep. the the two idiot pirates that you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Has and one has the false eye. And why is the British accent? Who knows? Why anything in this that, movie? That's a requirement for dystopian. Someone has to have a British accent. Yeah, it's classic. Have to great. They basically tie all of these kids together and make them pull their chariot <laughs> down the street like they're going to bring them all in, right? And out of nowhere, this like water gypsy. Uh, <laughs> it comes out and just starts spraying them with like a bagpipe full of water and it's just yeah. shooting them out. It's like, oh my gosh. Like ev- They become enchanted. Everyone knew it was a trap. Right? Okay. It's like, yeah. how is this not a trap? She sprays you out. She's like, oh, come over here behind this dune. Nah. Starts <laughs> belly dancing for him. And-, and the one guy's like, no, we, we shouldn't do it. And he's like, Nah, screw it. No, we should totally let, let it ride. Let's. She's go. like, look at me. I'm all wet. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> we find out it's Tara. Okay, this this one really got me. <laughs> all thirty seconds of leading up to this point, she's like, "I found my home. This is where I live now." <laughs> <laughs> She's been there for 30 seconds. I found my family that I've been yeah. gone from for 21 years. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. This is my father. This is my father. He and abducted we live me. Here. I've already got a broom and a job and everything, and you saw me five minutes ago. All the water you could ever have. They're in this oasis underground because yeah. there's a glacier melting, and they just water everywhere. Water everywhere. I did want to go back real quick because I remember I said there was some serious pedo energy in this movie. One of the things that I forgot to say that the bounty hunters said to the kids as they were going to bring him in, that's what the e-police want. Like young lads makes a man's day. Remember that? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No. Oh. As I'm, and they had like these creepy looks on their face yeah. the whole time. Yeah, they definitely like, did. It's like, we're mm-hmm. going to bring in the young boys to the e-police. And I was like, what the frick is... Like, this just took a turn. What are the well, e-police... <laughs> Doing. <laughs> if if they're gonna castrate him, they they just want the I I don't know trimmings. Or? I, 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 I need a puke button on this. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, she's like, this is where I live now. In the last five minutes, I found my father. This is my home. Let's forget about he, Bodai and never leave. He was only five dunes over. <laughs> he <was just> over here. <laughs> Turns out there's a lot of people in this desert. Thought went, there was nobody. There's a lot. He went to go get milk one day and. <laughs> <laughs> they have this scene okay after they do the scene of lottery tickets of the, the dad's meeting everybody and all this stuff oh no this is all your home now too you can all stay here forever and they have this scene between jason and jamie gertz their boyfriend girlfriend that's the main guy and the main girl and they're just soaking wet in yes. the scene they're clothed yeah and they're soaking wet. you could tell that right before every take somebody had to shoot them in the face with a hose because there's just water beating off of them in every <laughs> single edit of the scene absolutely freshly sprayed down yep yep i if if it's like most movies and the scene took you know a day or two to shoot every time they yelled cut somebody had to come over there with a hose and just right in each of their faces i was a little disappointed in the lack of careless whisper <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, there really needed to be some saxophone. There, there was zero saxophone. zero saxophone. I thought we were going to have a saxophone scene there for a I, second. Yeah, I thought so. I was getting it geared up. Kenny G is here. We go. You can hear him uh, warming up there. You can hear him <laughs> waxing his clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> But no, they just have this kind of heart-to-heart -heart conversation, and he's like, Soaking no. wet. So, again, soaking wet the whole time. No, we have to leave. We have, we came here to get Daniel and, and Bodai, and we got Daniel, but we don't have Bodai. And she's like, no, we can't leave. And it's just this whole back-and-forth stupid scene. She's like, I'm not leaving. You guys shouldn't leave either. And that's it. It's perfectly safe here, even though we're two and a half minutes away from right. from everything. Where they just raided. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Apparently. And... Um, they all decide they're going to leave without Tara, right? They're like, they have another vote. They're like, we're going to go get Bodai even without you. Because they fuck, well, because she tells him in their little sprayed down, soaking wet scene that Bodai is at the Aqua, the aqua Ducks. Not the Aqua Ducks, it's the Aqua Bunker. Uh, yeah, the right? Aqua Bunker. The Aqua Bunker. And so he's like, well, we're going to the Aqua Bunker. It's a dam. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, huh. Hoover Dam. <laughs> it is. What's even funnier than this, right? She's like, I know where they're being kept, but I'm not going because this is paradise and we have to stay here. They all go to leave without her. And they're all back in their solar babies gear. And they're all about to run out. And she comes running up with a dang map of the aqua bunker. Like, oh, you're going to the aqua bunker? Here's hey, a map of I've the got. plans of the entire place and how to get there. She took apart her childhood like, bedroom for that. Where the hell does she have a map to the aqua bunker from. Well, we know it wasn't like tattooed on some little girl's back. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, even if her dad had it, why would her dad have it if he never planned to use it? Where did it come from? She just literally like manifested the thing that they needed she, to complete the story. She's just she's like Ariel and Little Mermaid, <laughs> just random shit in her in her chest. And she's bunker. like, "Well, I got the map to the bad guys." Let's see what do I got? Uh, uh, fork? No. <laughs> Glass, no. Oh yeah, map to the aqua bunker. All right, yeah, we need this. I'm probably gonna need this. Go. Let me run over there and give it to him really quick. <laughs> and why? Why was that scientist in the aqua bunker anyway? I, oh, the magnet lady. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was all supposed to be in the same place. So they, it's they the headquarters of like the world. I, apparently. <laughs> oh my gosh! Damn it! <laughs> it literally was a dam. <laughs> All right. So Where was whole, I? The whole time they could have had oh. access to Lake Mead. That's right. That's right. <laughs> right. This is All what right. happens when you build a civilization in the desert. That's right. <laughs> Expect a lake to a man made lake, nonetheless. That's right. right. So the baddies have the marble on the ropes. They've had the marble in their possession now. And frying they're it. they're frying it with this giant magnet, right? They're like, well, oh, shoot it with the death and ray little ra magnet. robot thing. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's their YouTube channel, dude. Johnny Five they microwaved it. <laughs> now it's crispy. They're like, all right, check this, check this shit out. <laughs> Bring out Terminac. <laughs> <laughs> This is the jankiest, <laughs> the jankiest robot of all time. Just rolls out like dur, 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 dur. I have a drill. <laughs> and they're all like, oh, this and the way they try to hype this thing up, right? Like, of Sarah Douglas is like the robot's hype man, right? <laughs> Top oh, of the man. line, mag light eyes. That's right. Let me tell you this, man. Not only is this thing gonna get the job done, we programmed to like it. <laughs> right? <laughs> He likes doing it. Okay. <laughs> he has feelings. That's right. He enjoys pain. Oh, like, okay. <laughs> you should see him with his shake weight afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god. He'll be gosh. in the back doing lines with you later. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're now they're, they're the, the kids are rolling up on the aqua bunker while while Terminac <laughs> is about to take apart the, the boulder <laughs> or the marble. And freaking Metron craps out a pole vault. Okay. <laughs> Where the hell did he get a pole vault from? Just <laughs> and, <laughs> and he lands on his skates and somehow stays on his feet. Yeah. But no, even better than that, because yes, that's ridiculous. Because he oh pole vault and landed and didn't break his ankles right. on roller skates. Yeah. But if you watch the pole vault, he's skating up with the pole then it cuts to him pole vaulting over in tennis shoes. Yep. Wow. Clearly in tennis shoes. Then he lands on skates. So the skates disappeared while he was in the air and then reappeared on his feet for the landing. 
planes like, hide their landing gear all the time. <laughs> they, have the, they have the landing gear all up. Right. Retractable gear. <laughs> It's we're, the future. They had the landing we're gear. We're beginning up on the our streets. descent into <laughs> the aqua <laughs> bunker. <laughs> Please put your trays and the uh, and seats oh in the upright gosh. position. You hear a noise? That's the landing gears <laughs> coming down. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna go ahead and uh, <laughs> do the fast and seatbelt sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we get cleared for a landing here? We're uh, we're gonna bounce about four times. Thank you for flying, Spirit. <laughs> If uh, the weather is a balmy 120 degrees outside. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a dry heat. <laughs> if you're looking for balls, they're in the lower level. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The dogs with the flashlight heads. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> He go, At least they put him in the right spot this time. I mean, they don't do much on the skates. So put him on the head. They Let's brought light to the scene. Metron gets in there. He beep boops on the science panel to open the gates for everybody else and also shuts the gate just in time to block off the, the dogs. dogs with freaking <laughs> flashlights <laughs> attached to their freaking heads. Well, you miss <laughs> Dobermans with flashlights on their <laughs> You miss the sharks with lasers. That's what, I'm what do we have? Laser. We don't have any sharks, sir. We do have Dobermans with flashlights <laughs> on their heads. <laughs> Close enough. We're over budget. That's That'll right. work. That's the oh. additional $10 million. <laughs> and then they keep going down the... And this honestly should have been the end boss of the movie. They When they found a ladder... Like that should have been... <laughs> <laughs> that should have been all... Should, oh, no, sir. What is it? It's a ladder. Crap. They all got roller skates on. We're <laughs> screwed. <laughs> That's the end of the movie. Right. They done the ladder. Oh, <laughs> the, 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 the bane of their existence. Steps. Ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere they had to go was, was, was ramped or inclined up or yeah. down, except for this ladder. In a society <laughs> run entirely on wheels. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Should have been mission over right there. It's just been. That's all she wrote, that's boys. It. Head back to the oasis. All right, well, we're done. There's a. They get back to Green Tree. They're like, what happened? There was a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> get, they like they're rolling back into Rebel Base. Just like, <laughs> right. oh. They had a ladder, sir. It's what? A ladder. How about this? Wasn't on any of our intel. It wasn't on the map. <laughs> get them. Get them going on the countermeasure. <laughs> what well, scissor lift? That's <laughs> they're gonna bring with them next time. <laughs> All right. Nothing stops the solar babies, though. They yeah. climb the yeah. ladder and roller skates. They fly into the main lab. They start whacking fools with hockey sticks. They got Yeah, they got their little hockey sticks out. Do you think they ever, like, <laughs> two minutes for hooking? <laughs> you think they ever evaluated their situation? Because, I mean, they killed a lot of people. Dude, they sent that one guy falling down the ladder chute to get eaten by the dogs. Yeah. Right. And as they skated away, the first thing that popped in my head was, like, just hearing, you know, Rabbit go, man, Jason killed a guy <laughs> <laughs> with a trident. <laughs> That's, yeah, they they just come in there, they're cracking fools. Grok gets hit, he hilariously starts like gurgling as he's going down from that. Uh, the freaking uh, Sarah Douglas gets her hands melted off. Yeah. Yeah. And then electrocuted, cool. like on top of that. They're like, right. we're not in fire. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. They knew exactly how to take out Terminac, right? Yeah. These kids, they're like, do the whip thing again. And they yeah. whip him in a circle, smacks him right in the eye. Get his other eye. I'm like, yo, these guys knew exactly how to do Also, it was on the back of the map. <laughs> it was all on the back of the map. Instructions. Yeah. If they have a Terminac there, here's its eyeballs. Here's how you take this thing out. Right. <sighs> Sarah Douglas does this great electrocution. I mean, she is always going all in for stuff anyway. She with her melted hands, falls back into this, like, panel, and she just does the full body. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, this is great. This is just great acting. Every time. Someone had to do it. Grok, Grok then, who I thought was dead because he was gurgling, comes and scoops up the little boy. And again, this got creepy. He's like, oh. And he does this little tongue wag, like the Joker from, like, Heath Ledger's Joker. He's like, <laughs> Yeah. You uh is this your ball? <laughs> right? Do you want to play ball? And I'm like, 
yo, somebody get and, and like activated Terminax anti pedophile programming. Because <laughs> it was like in space balls with the virgin alarm for yeah. Dodd. Yeah. <laughs> Got your nose. <laughs> Terminac immediately was like, no, even he was like, this isn't happening. He just grabs his arm. Blind robot knew what was about to go down. Right, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's been around Pro- him a lot. Protocol 3 <laughs> had been activated at Terminac. That's right. And um, Terminac ends up taking out taking out Grok. And this is another you know, thing we've been talking about, like people show up, things happen, and they're just never seen again. Gaviel is in there fighting with Jason. He shoots Terminac, but at this point, Grok is already dead. He runs out the door. We never see him again. No. Good. No resolution. Nothing. Don't know what happened to him. Don't know what happened to him. Just gone. There should have been at least been some kind of final showdown between him and Jason. They wrestled a little bit, but it was almost like in the background of the shots that was happening. You, yeah. I mean, you would have thought two main characters. Something. But no. Climax of the movie, you would think they'd be facing off. No. Nope. They're able to grab Bodai. The place blows up, and literally water comes shooting out through the dam, and they all end up in a snow globe of friendship, basically. And they do their the circle little, thing again. Circle, oh. Roy Orbison's glowing. <laughs> They're like, "Yeah, where'd he go? He's gone. He shoots back into space. Wait, he's inside he's all, all of us. around us <laughs> and inside of us. <laughs> Guys, it was the power of friendship all along." I was fully expecting him to be like full on mega force thumb kiss. <laughs> that was it. Oh, if Roy Orbison had been looked back over his right. shoulder. Oh, he didn't have shoulders because he was an orb. So but, orb. you know, it just they gave him the thumb just kiss. Thumb kiss. Back. Yeah. <sighs> I really thought skateball was going to play a bigger part in this movie. <laughs> I was disappointed it didn't. You know, another thing that was zero point. Like, like they put yeah. all this stuff in the front of it, like, oh, it skateball was, is going to be a big part of this. Right. Maybe the final thing will let's, be decided by a skateball game. Let's skateball for Roy. And uh, no, it just yeah. didn't happen. Well, Bodie wasn't impressed. Uh, what are you going to do? No, Bodie. Sorry, Bodie. 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 Right. Bodie. Let's give this movie some awards right. because it deserves them. No, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay. Yeah. The first one we always start with is the Will Patton Award for Intensity. So, Ryan, could you please... Bring me the head of Will Patton. All righty. He is in the Will Patton seat. <laughs> Will he Patton is. Seat today. Thank you. Hi, Will. Good to see you. Good to Hello, see you, Will. Will. <laughs> this man sets the bar for intensity across Hollywood. I mean, look at those eyes. Look at them. Nobody has ever given as intensive a performance in anything as Will Patton does in his home movies where he's hanging out with his kids, okay? He's always dialed in 100%, which is why we named the Intensity Award after Will Patton. So today we have to come up with some nominees of people in this film that just even though they were in Solar Babies, you knew they were all in. They were treating it as serious as a car accident and acted with intensity the entire time. Who we got? I got Peter. Peter Kowango or Kovanko. He, Gaviel. He play. Oh, yeah. He was Gabriel. just... He was locked in. He was like Stifler height. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole time, just... Yeah. I had... Uh, well, if you want to go, I'll, I'll just be a tiebreaker between the two of you. How about oh, that? Man, I had Roy Orbison, man. That you have- <laughs> gave a hell of a performance. That's what I originally had. <laughs> <laughs> the Orb was a star, man. All right, well, I, I, I'll give it to... to what was the guy's name who played Gaviel? Peter Kovanko. I will give it to, pa- to Peter Kovanko. I thought the ball was good. The ball was good. But, you know, you couldn't really always tell what he was thinking or feeling. I guess you had to hold him to know that you he had liked to, hold to be him. held. Yeah. And then you could feel it, but I couldn't feel it through my TV. So yeah. congratulations That's to the guy that played Gaviel. He is our Will Patton <laughs> Award winner. The honorable mention to Adrian Pazdar as as the Falconer. I thought he was pretty intense. I thought he was pretty good. Real yeah. Yeah. dialed in and yeah. serious through the whole movie. Uh, the next award is our Michael Dudikoff Trash Can Full of Dirt Award. Mel? Oh, you are in the You are in the can trash seat. can seat. Uh, you, you can oh, use yeah, that. Use the metal chair. The metal chair. <laughs> oh. Yeah. We'll see. A lot of garbage performances have been stacked up inside that trash can. Heavier every episode. (laughs) 
Thank you, Mel. The Michael Dudikoff Trash Can Full of Dirt Award is the award that we give out to the actor that gave the worst performance in the movie, the one that displayed the acting range of a trash can full of dirt. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> Michael, we love you. Let this. You know, we should have a disclaimer every time. <laughs> this in no way reflects our <laughs> our love for Michael Dudikoff, which is vast. Yes. <laughs> we have him on the wall. We do he's, have him on the there. wall. In, in a movie he gave a good performance in, American Ninja 2. Not American Ninja 1, which is how he earned the name of the trash can in the first place. So see, Michael, it's not all bad. That's right, brother. All right. So who you guys got as the trash can full of dirt award winners? I I can go first on this one. I had Claude Brooks as Claude Rabbit. Brooks. I thought Rabbit was the weakest of the of the gang. And every almost every line reading he gave was cheesy, like he was acting in a theater production of Solar Babies uh, and not a movie. You don't have to hit like, the cheap seats when the camera's right in front of you. Like the a middle school acting production? Because yes. it was, uh, that is also who I had. Oh, is it? Yeah, really? Claude Brooks. Claude Brooks. All so right. are we going to be looking forward to a Burlington Haylofters uh, musical? <laughs> oh, Solar, Babies, Solar, Babies? Musical? Solar Babies musical? We could do it. Let's, Let's write it. it. Let's, do, Let's it. do it. Who did you have was an honorable mention unless you also had Claude Brooks? I had the ball. Yeah. The ball, <laughs> the ball it, with two separate nominations it, for two different awards tonight, folks. It was just there. <laughs> it could have been anything. It, it could have been. Uh, it could have been a ball full of dirt. It, it could have been. It, it been uh, we know, never got to cute. find out how many licks it got to the center of that thing, man, no. because he had the carbon bit. And uh, the ball blew it up. Well, it's because they killed the pedophile. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> All right, guys. The next thing we do is our top three performers. So this is just sub totally subjective. Right. Not who was the best, but who was your favorite three performances in the movie? Who you got, Mueller? All right, three. I got the warden, Charles Durning. I thought he did all right. Yeah. I kind of liked the two minutes we got to see him. It would have been nice to have much. more. Liked him. Uh, Peter DeLuise. I kind of mm -hmm. enjoyed his. Got a uh, Can't go wrong. Yeah. Tug. Number one, Jamie Gertz. Jamie Gertz. You know, ours is very similar, Ryan. <laughs> I had it number three. <laughs> I had Richard Jordan. I had Grok. I thought okay. the dude was chewing the scenery a little bit, but yeah. he was he was seemed to be relishing his his part. And it was in a lot of great movies. He's a well known actor. He sadly only passed away in ninety three, not that yeah, long was, after this. Yeah, it was uh, I, I was looking at his IMDB. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, he he went young. He was he had a brain tumor. Yeah. I guess. Okay. He was in the middle of shooting uh the fugitive. He played a part of Dr. Nichols, who ended up being the main bad guy in that, and they had to recast him halfway through because his illness just got too much yeah. and he had to drop out of it. But yeah, nineteen ninety three. So I had I had Richard Jordan as number three, and then I had Peter DeLuise at two, Jamie Gertz at one, because those two come on. Those two, for me. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about you, Mel, but for me. I am a, a fan of a tug. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we did have a movie about a ball. I didn't uh, vote for him, though. I, That's uh, all right. I went with uh, number three, Darstar. Okay. Okay. Because Adrian Pazdar. Yeah, you know, he actually showed some, a little bit of emotion in, in talking with, uh, you know, Burning Man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, and and the whole thing with the uh, the the hawk or the owl or whatever it was, uh, who knows? Yeah, uh, he had crows. He had uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean everything. He just he was all right. Uh, Jason Patrick. Yeah, is that play, your number one? Playing for Jason. Oh, no, number he's two. number two. Okay, definitely number two. Jason played Jason. Jason played Jason with his perfectly thin strip of chest hair that went directly all the way up and down his entire torso. Yeah, we like, call that yeah. landing strip. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it seemed like it seemed like only reason I noticed it is because it seemed like he cut it that way, purposefully. Don't you? Ah, uh, no. What's a oh. big no? All right, <laughs> all right. And uh, number one, I went with uh, Tara. Oh, Jimmy Gertz. Jimmy Gertz. A you unanimous number one across the you, board. You have to. There you go. Jamie Gertz with the sweep. I mean, she had bangs in the scene when it was really humid. Dude, there's one. It was, it's just sticking straight up. It was like uh, something about Mary. Yeah. yeah. So. But that's how they used to wear them back. My sister used to do her hair like that, where they would literally just the bang. Like a, how a, tall and erect can I get my bangs right. to be? But in how many cans of <laughs> hairspray does right. it take? That, as I immediately thought of my sister when I saw that. So sorry, Rachel, <laughs> if you're listening. But you had the Jamie Gertz hair going hard. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought of a couple different ways Arnold could have made this movie better because, of course, Arnold could have made <laughs> Solar Babies better. could have. I mean, it was 1986. It was like Running Man, Predator were coming up right next, ne right next to each other. 
he could have very easily been the main guy, meaning Jason's part, yeah. in the movie, and Definitely he leads this group to whatever. And there could have been a big fight, but awesome. He takes on the Terminator versus Terminac. Oh, yeah. Come on What if now. he rolled in as Terminator? Dude, what if they just like... What if they we, introduced Terminac we, and it was him? <laughs> <laughs> this is the Terminac. We couldn't afford the rights to the Terminator. So he comes in. He's just dressed a little differently. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, oh wait, I'll be back. It goes right. and gets his little <laughs> drill bit. <laughs> he's just got a little like his drill. <laughs> <laughs> little Black and Decker. Right. <laughs> I've been programmed to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> or I thought he even could have played Grok. You know, the main, yeah. the main yeah, could have. SS officer. Yep. Probably not a good thing. <laughs> Why do you say that? You're going to be equally great. Hello, little boy. You don't is want this that shiny, Is this your shiny ball? we <laughs> 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 <be> fantastic. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> and honestly, if he had played Jason, the whip move would have been way more believable. I would have believed he threw every single one of those people across that They wouldn't have to do the whip move. He could just throw them. (laughs) Right. (laughs) He'd just launch each one, one after the other. Right. That's uh, because it was Jason Patrick. I didn't buy it. No. Tuck and roll. That's right. (laughs) Right. Right. All right, guys. We ultimately have to Uh, land somewhere on this movie. So we do. Is it a good movie? Objectively, subjectively, you know what? Everyone's wrong. The movie is good. Or do you say no? Everyone is right. 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's no redeeming qualities. It's just bad. It's not even bad and enjoyable. Or are you somewhere in the middle? You're saying, yeah, it's a bad movie, but I like it. I thought it was good. So in that case, it's a bad movie that rules. Where do you guys fall on this movie? Oh, boy. You know, this thing is weird. It is a (laughs) weird movie. That we can all agree, I think, regardless of where we come weird. down. I normally like weird. You do. I, You're like the king of weird And movies. I don't mind weird. Uh, you know, but I'll say this. Yeah. Um, it's wonderfully weird, man. I'd watch this again. <laughs> I think it's a bad movie that rules. <laughs> Listen, I am going to just say also, I really enjoyed this movie. <laughs> Way more than I should have. I would 100% watch this again. This is easily a bad movie that rules. I mean, it's objectively, it's not a good movie. No, not at all. And there's all kinds of things that happen where I'm like, come on, guys. What, do you, what are, we, are we trying to do? But then I remember a choreographer directed it, right? Even Mel Brooks is like, what was I thinking? Uh, I liked it. This, Sorry. this is get buddies together and watch this thing and oh, roast it 100%. over and over. Great party movie. Yeah, exactly. Great party movie. Mel? Don't no. don't feel the pressure. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'd love to say that this movie ruled. Yeah. But that would not be You're the like, case. But I'm not going to. I'm, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not, no. not watching this. Just Ever straight again. up bad. Straight up bad. Yeah. It, it's it's bad. All right. Yeah. I'm not gonna try and convince you. I think this is one where a reasonable person, I think, could easily say that. Make it a musical when I'm in. Oh, wow. Well, oh, there we go. Oh, well, let's okay. get that written. <laughs> next week, we're not talking about a musical. <laughs> right. But we are talking about a Sylvester Stallone movie next week. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Early Stallone. Oh. Really early Stallone. Oh. Ooh. We're talking about Death Race 2000. Ooh. Oh, I thought you were talking about like Rocky Three. No, even earlier than that. Earlier oh. than that. So everybody knows that Solar Babies won the episode poll, but it won it by a slim margin. It was pretty close. And Death Race 2000 was right behind it. The automatic recount didn't get triggered. So the automatic re- t- recount didn't get triggered, but we were actually we were going to do another movie next week because we had a specific guest host that was coming in that had requested that movie, but they uh, unfortunately aren't able to do it anymore. So uh, to sub in a movie, we thought, well, let's just go with Death Race 2000 since it was so close on and the And that pole. wasn't a bad one when we did the movie trailer. I was like, I'd be no. all in for that one. It's David Carradine yeah. and Stallone, right? Yeah. And a, in a race across the country where you get points for running people over? I don't see how this is a bad movie. I know. I can't. It's got to be good, right? It's the it 70s. Is it anything like Cannonball Run? I have I well, Cannonball Run I think was more of a comedy. Yeah. This is, seems to be more like Death Race 2000. Oh. You know. I guess that's not funny. No. Uh, I mean, it's probably unintentionally funny. Oh, well, fair enough. But I don't know if they set out to make it funny like they know. did with that. Plus, Jackie Chan's not in it, so. But see, Cannonball Run's got Dom DeLuise. 
That's true. That's true. Yeah. And Burt Reynolds, but and Burt Reynolds. you know, yeah. we're not going to have any of those people in Death Race, but it's still going to be good. So tune in next week for Death Race 2000. All right. In the meantime, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. We would not be here without you guys. So thank you sincerely to each and every one of you. If you'd like to email the show, reach out to us. It's this show is trash at gmail.com. Now that you've listened to an episode, if it's your first time, you understand why that's our email address. <laughs> we appreciate you sticking out to the end. On behalf of Mel Vandy and Ryan Mueller, I'm James Hauser. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Time for solar babies. We're roller skating on rocks. And we're playing skateball. <laughs> now you guys got a verse for me? No. Solar babies, <laughs> don't make your dreams come true. Doesn't go with the music. It's all right. <laughs> so angry. <laughs> Bo die. Bo die. Bo die. Bye ball. <laughs> to go back to space now <laughs> that would have been way better music than the Smokey Robinson in the desert one <laughs> <laughs> alright hold on two minutes